Good morning, everyone. If you could please find your ways to your seats. We'd like to get out of here, if need be. <laughs> Looks like the weather may or may not work with us today. It's great to see everyone today. If you'll please be seated, we will be starting our ceremony. My name is Shalith Hansbro. I'm the confidential assistant to the director of the Illinois Department of Corrections, and it is my privilege to be your mistress of ceremonies today. Today, we will honor IDOC and IDJJ fallen heroes. It's a tribute to those who have given the ultimate sacrifice. Also, we will name the Correctional Officer of the Year, Employee of the Year, Parole Agent of the Year, Juvenile Justice Specialist, Juvenile Justice Aftercare Employee, and Juvenile Justice Non-Security Employee of the Year. The recipients of these awards have demonstrated outstanding leadership and professionalism within IDOC and IDJJ. If everyone could please rise for the presentation of the colors by the Illinois Department of Corrections Honor Guard, and then please remain standing through the invocation. Permission granted. Jalen Brewer will now perform the national anthem, and she will be accompanied by Sherman Napier of Decatur Correctional Center.
join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order on. Acting Chief Chaplain Chris Eaton, please join us um, with the invocation. <clears throat> For those who pray, you're invited to join me this morning. Creator, I acknowledge you with everyone here on this beautiful spring day. Our families come together on this day every year to remember and to honor those who've died serving the people of this great state of Illinois. This morning, I ask that as we gather on this day to remember, God, would you grant us sharp memories of those who we remember and those who are deeply missed. May each of us gathered in this sacred space recognize the solemn, sacred service of each person that we remember on this day that we have set apart this day that we've made holy in honor of our corrections family. Amen. You may be seated. Chaplain Easton, thank you so much for setting the stage with such a uh, heart moving invocation. Once again, welcome everyone to the 2024 Memorial Wall Service and thank you for joining us as we honor those whose names are on the walls behind me. These are the men and women who died in the line of duty. Some of their family members are here with us today and we'd like to extend a special thank you for joining us on today. It's never easy to lose a loved one and we want you to know that we will never forget their sacrifice. The Illinois Correctional Employee Memorial Association sponsors this year the event on an annual basis. If the members of ICEMA could please stand and be acknowledged. Let's give them a round of applause. They do this every year for us. We had a pause during COVID, but thank you again for leading the charge and recognizing how important it is to continue to remember and also acknowledge those who are doing the work today. Thank you again. 
So we appreciate you all for taking the time out of your schedules today to honor the men and women who paid the ultimate sacrifice. And at this time, IDOC Director LaToya Hughes will come forward with words. Good morning. It is an honor to stand here before you today to offer our heartfelt gratitude to our current IDOC employees for their service and to pay tribute to the courageous men and women who serve our department and make the ultimate sacrifice in the line of duty. To the husbands, the wives, the parents, the children, the siblings, the friends, the colleagues, and fellow correctional officers who have been impacted by the lives that we commemorate today. I know that there is no speech, no ceremony, that can alleviate your pain. But today we remember their names, their faces, and the profound legacy that they leave behind. We honor their courage, their integrity, and their unwavering commitment to duty. Let us never forget their sacrifice and the profound impact that they've had on our community. To the recently fallen members of the IDOC family, to Christopher James and his family, to Andrew Fott and his family, may you rest in peace, knowing that your memory will continue to inspire and guide us in the days ahead. As we reflect on the lives of these remarkable individuals, let us also reaffirm our commitment to upholding their legacy and recognize correctional officers and staff who continue to uphold the values of integrity, professionalism, and service that they exemplified. This week and throughout the nation this week, we recognize National Correctional Officers and Employees Week as an opportunity for us to celebrate correctional staff who demonstrate remarkable courage and leadership in all positions and face daily challenges with resilience and resolve, no matter what the obstacles are. Every day, many of you work tirelessly, often sacrificing time with your families, your loved ones, with little to no public recognition about the sacrifices that you make day in and day out, the risks that you undertake, and the invaluable contributions you provide to the state of Illinois and to the Department of Corrections. Today, we recognize your commitment to maintaining safety and security within our facilities and in the communities, and supporting the agency's goal of serving justice in Illinois and increasing public safety. It is certainly because of you and your invaluable contributions that the department can promote positive change for those in our custody and work towards reducing recidivism. Now we are incredibly fortunate to have such dedicated professionals in our correctional systems. And again, we are thankful for the contribution that your family members made to the, on behalf of the department. To all of the Illinois Department of Correction staff, I extend my deepest appreciation for your service, your sacrifice, and your unwavering dedication. So thank you, and may you continue to inspire us with your professionalism, commitment to excellence, and integrity in upholding your duty to care for those entrusted to our custody. As we remember our past and the family members that we have lost, may we look forward to celebrating the achievements of those who continue to move the department forward. Thank you for everyone for coming today, and I will turn it back over to Shalit Hansbro. Thank you. Thank you so much, Director Hughes. And now, if you would please join me, Acting Director of the Illinois Department of Juvenile Justice, Robert Vickery. Thank you. Good morning. It's truly an honor to participate in this ceremony today. Thank you to the ICEMA Board of Directors and Director Hughes for inviting us to participate. This ceremony is a highlight each year for DJ st DJJ staff and leadership. It reminds us of the importance and high stakes of our work, providing care and safety to the young people in our custody and supporting them as they return home. 
I want to take a moment to honor two DJJ staff who we lost this year to unexpected illness, aftercare specialist Brandon Thomason and youth and family specialist supervisor Mike Bostic. Both men dedicated their entire careers to serving young people. They were compassionate and tireless caregivers for our kids. They were trusted colleagues. They are missed. I also want to recognize a significant accomplishment from the past year. Last year, we recognized the need to strengthen both the educational programming we offer to middle and high school students and the vocational programming we offer to our graduates. So we decided to focus our high school programming at IYC Chicago and IYC Warrenville and convert the St. Charles campus into a specialized program for graduates. The result is greater educational capacity at two of our facilities and the Phoenix Emerging Adults Career and Education Center, the Peace Center at St. Charles. The Peace Center offers college opportunities in several new vocational programming, uh, including personal training certification, audio engineering, construction, and virtual reality and simulator certifications for forklift driving, drone piloting, and much more. Congratulations to the teams at IYC Chicago, IYC Warrenville, and the Peace Center for making these transitions possible. Finally, we're looking forward to several milestones of the next year. First, we will open a new facility in Lincoln, Illinois to serve the young people from Central Illinois much closer to their home communities. Secondly, we'll collaborate with Department of Corrections to launch emerging adult education programs at IYC Harrisburg. We're grateful for the ongoing partnership and collaboration with DOC. We're looking forward to these initiatives in the year ahead of us. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Acting Director Vickery. We'd also like to acknowledge our governor, J.B. Pritzker. He has acknowledged all of the hard work that you continue to do, as well as acknowledge your loved ones who have passed on in the line of duty. He has acknowledged that through the state of Illinois, that this is the week that we will proclaim for the remembrance and also for the work. And he sent a proclamation for the state of Illinois, IDOC and IDJJ employees. If we could just please give him a round of applause. So thank you to our speakers again. And this portion of the 2024 Memorial Wall service is a memorial tribute to our fallen heroes. At this time, Operations Chief Justin Hammers, if you would please come forward and read the names as the honor guard approaches. Over the years, 39 IDOC and IDJJ employees have died in the line of duty. Honor Guards will pay homage to those fallen heroes as I read their names. The Honor Guard will lay a rose on the memorial wall and offer a salute and a final tribute to 36 of those employees whose names are on the wall. They are being accompanied by correctional bagpiper Tom Ogilvie of St. Andrew's Pipes and Drums. Joseph Clark, Joliet, 1865. John Jones, Pontiac, 1922. Charles Kruger, Pontiac, 1919. James McMurray, Stateville, 1920. Peter Klein, Joliet, 1926. Edward McCasey, Stateville, 1944. Freebert Johnkey, Pontiac, 1933. Zoeth Skaggs, Stateville, 1944. Louis Paul Menard, 1965. 
William McCasling, Pontiac, 1967. Author, Kissero Menard, 1965. George Wilson, Menard, 1965. Leonard Tatro, Kankakee, 1968. James Zeiger, Stateville, 1973. Rufus Campbell, IYC St. Charles, 1970. Robert Jefferson, Sheridan, 1971. Peter Bird, Stateville, 1977. William Thomas, Pontiac, 1978. Robert Conkle, Pontiac, 1978. Stanley Cole, Pontiac, 1978. Joseph Cushman, Menard, 1982. Verdine Willis, Pontiac, 1985. Frieda King, Pontiac, 1983. Cecil Harbison, Menard, 1984. Henry B. Washington, IYC Joliet, 1986. Lawrence Frank Cush Jr., Stateville, 1989. Robert Taylor, Pontiac, 1987. Son, Sonny Truong, Stateville, 1988. Harold Daniels, Stateville, 1992. Kevin McGuire, Urbana, 1996. Helen Coaches, Graham, 2002. Lori Toki, Lincoln, 2004. Anthony Tony Lee Hill, 2007. Elaine Amy Wu, Parole, 2010. Henry Sims, Joliet, 1913. Tracy Cooper, Stateville, 2010. As I read the names of the three fallen heroes whose name haven't been added to the wall yet, I'd ask if the families here, if a representative would please come forward and so the honor guard could provide the, a rose to the family and offer a salute and a final tribute. Christopher James, East Moline, Craig Daughtery, Western, Andrew Fott, Pontiac, 2024.
we would like to thank you all for being here today. And we also want to just reiterate that your loved one will always be remembered. And on next year, their names should be added to the wall. Thank you again. We are honored by your presence. You may all be seated. At this time, if Director Hughes could come forward or just stand, please, and Michael Campbell of Western Illinois Correctional Center, U.S. Army Sergeant. Today, Director Hughes will lay the wreath in honor of the fallen heroes. This is a formal expression of sympathy to each individual family member. The wreath symbolically represents the 35 employees who paid the ultimate sacrifice in the line of duty at the Department of Corrections and the Department of Juvenile Justice. Again, Michael Campbell of Western Illinois Correctional Center and U.S. Army Sergeant is laying the second wreath, and it represents our military and their continuing sacrifices for our freedom. <laughs> Rebecca Hall, accompanied by Sherman Hall, Sherman Napier, will sing, Heaven Was Needing a Hero.
A 21 gun salute is one of the oldest and most recognized international ceremonies bestowing honor to be received by an individual, civilian, or uniformed person. The sounding of taps expresses a final and confirmed salute by recognized national and state orders. Taps will be played by Jason Brewer at this time. Right, face, reset, arm. Thanks to those of you who attended, presented, and the family members for being here for the memorial service. Thank you again, Isima. At this time, the memorial service is concluded, and the second portion of our ceremony today gives us an opportunity to recognize those who have excelled within the Illinois Department of Corrections and the Department of Juvenile Justice. These awards recognize those who have shown outstanding leadership, professionalism, and showing up every day within these respective agencies. For the Illinois Department of Corrections, Justin Hammers, Chief of Operations, will present the award for Correctional Officer of the Year. Would the nominees please stand as I call your name and uh, please remain standing. Sarah Smiley, Correctional Officer, Big Muddy Correctional Center. Jessica Cortell, Correctional Officer, Centralia Correctional Center. Elizabeth Bland, Correctional Officer, Danville Correctional Center. Santez Softly, Sergeant, Decatur Correctional Center. Mark George, Correctional Officer, Dixon Correctional Center. Jason Decker, Correctional Officer, East Moline Correctional Center. Lavelle McGill, Corrections Residence Counselor, Fox Valley ATC. Heidi Christian, Correctional Officer, Graham Correctional Center. Joshua Rickey, 
Correctional Officer, Hill Correctional Center. Cade Wall Jasper, Correctional Officer, Illinois River Correctional Center. Caleb Handy, Correctional Officer, Jacksonville Correctional Center. Fainu Fina, Tomofono, Correctional Treatment Officer, Joliet Inpatient Treatment Center. Rosemary Bridges, Correction Treatment Officer, Joliet Center, Treatment Center. Caitlin Becker, Correction Officer, Kiwani Life Skill Ranchy Center. Mitchell Nash, Correctional Officer, Lawrence Correctional Center. Trevor Lessman, Correctional Officer, Lincoln Correctional Center. Joshua Edwards, Correctional Officer, Logan Correctional Center. Devin Davis, Correctional Officer, Menard Correctional Center. Elizabeth Fisher, Residence Counselor 2, Peoria ATC. John Uraski, Correctional Officer, Pickneyville Correctional Center. Carly Yonka, Correctional Officer, Pontiac Correctional Center. James Hicks, Correctional Officer, Robinson Correctional Center. Austin Chandler and Vanessa Hamilton, both Correctional Officers from Shawnee Correctional Center. Alan Harper, Correctional Officer, Sheridan Correctional Center. Kyle Newhaus, Correctional Officer, Southwestern Correctional Center. Elizabeth Perez, Correctional Officer, Stateville Correctional Center. Jacob Knapp, Correctional Officer, Taylorville Correctional Center. Victoria Sanchez, Correctional Officer, Vandalia Correctional Center. Jordan Simmons, Correctional Officer, Viana Correctional Center. Casey Brunin, Correctional Officer, Western Correctional Center. I just want to thank you all so much for your hard work, commitment, and dedication to the department. Please join me in congratulating each of these nominees. You may be seated. The 2024 Illinois Department of Correction Correctional Officer of the Year was selected based on their commitment, professionalism, leadership, teamwork, and bravery. On November 4th, 2023, while traveling to work, this officer narrowly avoided being involved in a vehicle accident after two other vehicles collided head on. This officer immediately contacted 911, turned around and responded to the scene of the accident to ensure that everyone was involved was safe. As he arrived on the scene, he discovered that two female passengers were trapped in one of the vehicles involved. The local fire department and rescue team were first on scene and he assisted them in helping freeing the two trapped passengers. He also assisted in preparing them for transfer to the hospital by medevac. Unfortunately, the male passenger in the other vehicle involved was later pronounced deceased. But without the quick actions and the response, this tragedy could have potentially resulted in more casualties. The officer stayed at the scene of the accident to assist with the completion of incident reports since he was the only actual witness to the accident. And through all of this, he remained cognizant enough to call the facility and report that he was going to be late as he was worried about the shift being short staffed, causing potential staffing needs. His quick response was vital to preserve life of others and we commend his courageous activities for setting positive example for others to follow. He is an asset to the Illinois Department of Correction and to his facility. It is my honor and privilege to announce Jordan Simmons from Viana Correctional Center as the 2024 Illinois Department of Corrections Correctional Officer of the Year. Jordan, if you're present, please come forward. Congratulations, Jordan and Viana Correctional Center. Let's give them another hand. Thank you so much for your hard work and dedication. Assistant Director Alyssa Williams will present the award for Employee of the Year. And if the employee could come forward for a photo along with the 
supervisor and the facility. Thank you. And the director. Good morning, everyone. It is my honor and my privilege to announce the nominees for the IDOC Employee of the Year. Nancy Eplin, Accountant Technician 1 from Big Muddy Correctional Center. Terry Schulte, Clinical Services Supervisor, Centralia Correctional Center. Jonas Story, Chief Stationary Engineer, Danville Correctional Center. Matthew Clark, Office Associate, Dixon Correctional Center. Edmund Van Dyke, Correctional Maintenance Craftsman, East Moline Correctional Center. Leah Smith, Correctional Counselor, Fox Valley ATC. Blake Hanley, Labor General Office. Anna Kozik, RNCN2, Graham Correctional Center. Paul Kiesler, Chief Engineer and Steam Fitter, Hill Correctional Center. Amber Gregory, Corrections Casework Supervisor, Illinois River Correctional Center. Michael Martin, Correctional Food Supervisor 2, Jacksonville Correctional Center. Bonita Love, Social Worker 2, Joliet Inpatient Treatment Center. John Leonard, Corrections Ground Supervisor, Joliet Treatment Center. Sherry Pettis, Office Coordinator, Kiwani Life Skills Reentry Center. Dina Jackman, Administrative Assistant 1, Lawrence Correctional Center. Christina Alexander, Correctional Center Nurse, Lincoln Correctional Center. Shelby Russell, Healthcare Unit Administrator, Logan Correctional Center. Sherry Jones, Dental Assistant, Menard Correctional Center. Tracy Cheatham, Parole Programs Administrator, Parole. Sarah Meyer, Corrections Assessment Specialist, Peoria ATC. Claudia Choate, Office Coordinator, Pinckneyville Correctional Center. Brianna Ties, Record Office Associate, Pontiac Correctional Center. Casey Redman, Records Office Supervisor, Robinson Correctional Center. Crystal Robertson, Business Manager, Shawnee Correctional Center. Amanda McMahon, QMHP, Sheridan Correctional Center. Christopher Barber, Lieutenant, Southwestern Correctional Center. Juanina Jamison, Clinical Services Supervisor, Stateville Correctional Center. Jennifer Potts, Sex Offender Therapist 1, Taylorville Correctional Center. Casey Seely, Corrections Registered Nurse 2, Vandalia Correctional Center. Tony Mays, Water Plant Operator, Vienna Correctional Center. And Daryl Leeson, Plumber, Western Correctional Center. Let's give everyone a round of applause. And one I forgot, and I can't believe that I skipped over this. Diana Barons Kelber, Clinical Services Ca Supervisor from Decatur Correctional Center. My apologies, Diana. Now, it's my also my privilege to read about our Employee of the Year. This employee has worked hard with all the IDOC property moves that took place on Concordia campus this year. A lot was asked of him, and he did it sometimes alone with no assistance when there wasn't a work crew available to help regardless of the weather conditions. He was diligent about checking in with the department's fiscal unit to ensure the proper paperwork had been completed or that he had permission to dispose of certain items. This attention to detail helped surplus and scrap runs functionally, smoothly, and ensured that our property records were accurately maintained for audit purposes. The process of cleaning out the buildings and assisting staff to relocate took many months of hard work by numerous individuals. However, he was a leader within that group every day. Ultimately, the target date was met 
to have certain campus buildings emptied out, and this would not have been possible without his hard work and dedication to the department. Not only was he an asset in ensuring this move went smoothly, but he also continuously does what he can to maintain the campus and assist when there's storm damage, mowing, leaf cleanup, et cetera, year round. He always responds to calls immediately, and when he knows he says he will take care of it, it absolutely will be taken care of. We're very lucky to have such a dedicated, hardworking, and loyal person like Blake Hanley working for the Department of Corrections. Blake, if you'll please come forward. And once again, thank you to all our nominees for the hard work and dedication that you provide to this department day in and day out. We certainly could not do this work without you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much and congratulations again. At this time, we would ask Martha Dittmer, Chief, Deputy Chief of Parole, and she will come forward to present the award for Parole Agent of the Year. Good morning, thank you for this opportunity. The Parole Agent of the Year nominee began his IDOC career in 2006 as a correctional officer at the Thompson Correctional Center. He was quickly promoted to Sergeant in 2008 and until 2010. In 2010, he went to Dixon Correctional Center as a correctional counselor and, and was promoted to parole agent at the Rockford office in 2017 and senior parole agent in January of 2018. This senior parole agent has shown professionalism, leadership, and teamwork during this past year. He was one of four senior agents assigned to the Rockford parole office, exceeded expectations in helping train nine new people nine new parole agents in the field. This senior parole agent took time to mold the new agents and assist them with becoming knowledgeable, independent workers. In addition to training, he provided transportation for three parole agents. This senior parole agent was able to accomplish all of this while still maintaining his own caseload this type of work ethic that makes the parole vision great for these reasons. Agents Kyle Knauer is the Parole Division's Parole Agent of the Year. Congratulations and well done. Congratulations to our IDOC winners. And now we shift gears a bit and we invite our brothers and sisters from the Illinois Department of Juvenile Justice to now acknowledge their employees. And so at this time, IDJJ Deputy Director of Operations, Jeremy Burtis will present the award for Juvenile Justice Specialist.
Good morning, good afternoon, welcome. I would like to recognize, first of all, the teleprompter keeps telling me it's going to rain, so hurry up. So here I am. Um, I would like to recognize the specialist of the year, security staff of the year, per, uh, per se, from the Illinois Department of Juvenile Justice. Um, nominees are Juvenile Justice Specialist Patterson, representing Harrisburg. If you're here, please stand. Juvenile Justice Supervisor Ohm, representing Pierre Marquette. Juvenile Justice Specialist Easton, representing Warrenville. Juvenile Justice Specialist Najib, representing Chicago. And Juvenile Justice Supervisor Swade, representing St. Charles Peace Center. And you would think that I would learn to quit doing this on my phone because I can't see, but here we are. So this nominee is a supervisor. They currently work at a facility that recently um, experienced a transition. This person consistently demonstrates their ability to handle multiple tasks simultaneously with uh, all the while delivering the greatest outcome. His commitment to excellence is evident in pro his proactive approach to new challenges as well as the youth. This supervisor has standout qualities, exceptional rapport with staff and youth, fostering positive relationships with all. He is committed to leadership, he's very dedicated, and excels in a demanding environment. So without further ado, I would like to recognize our security staff of the year as Juvenile Justice Supervisor Jamel Swain. Congratulations. I'm also reading from that same teleprompter that it may rain soon, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce the next two presenters and you'll come up respectively. And so thank you for that presentation. So next, IDJJ Interim Deputy Director Thomas DeBetta will present the award for aftercare specialist and then Interim Deputy Director of Programs, Janice Evans, will present the award for Juvenile Justice Non-Security Employee of the Year. Good morning. It's an honor to be here today to present. First, I'd like to recognize four specialists from our Community Services Division of DJJ. Uh, that in the past year went above and beyond their job responsibilities and were awarded our ACS of the quarter recognition. When you hear your name, uh, please yourself or your family, please stand. Mary Waite out of Winnebago County. Adam Holdman out of St. Clair County. Angela Latham out of Sagamaw County. Brandon Thomason out of St. Clair County. Thank you. Now for our aftercare specialist of the year. This person has also gone above and beyond when it comes to being a public servant to the youth, families, and community of the state of Illinois. In the past, in the past year, in addition to her specialist duties, She's volunteered and assisted in a number of areas. A few of those areas are placement and resources, training, and our warrant process. She not only volunteers, but she completes the tasks assigned to her at a high level. 
There are several what I call abilities that she has. Responsibility, she does her job completely. Dependability, she can be counted on day in and day out. Adaptability, she can change and adjust, which when working with youth can happen day to day. And availability, she brings it every single day. She's one who reflects on thinking what others won't think, going where others won't go, and doing what others won't do. And in her profession, being what others want to be. Happy to acknowledge Bridget Craddock out of Cook County as our aftercare specialist of the year. Unfortunately, Bridget is on vacation and not here today. So, thank you. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Oh, grace and mercy has brought us all here. But when I say we work for Illinois Department of Juvenile Justice, I do not hesitate. We work with the youth of Illinois, and we are very proud that we do that. So as I want to just give the nominations, um, we have Marvin Sanders, Youth Family Specialist out of the Peace Center, Romy Hall, an educator out of Harrisburg, Penny Eberhardt out of Warrenville, Jeffrey Weber, educator out of Chicago, and Bridget Carter, mental health professional out of Pierre Marquette. But this is what I wanna say. For our IGJJ Employee of the Year, it's not just about what's on the resume. It's not just about what is pinned down and printed. It is not just about does this person do what you ask them to do. It's not just about do they show up when they show up but it's one thing, it's one more thing that they do. They understand the goals of the agency. So this person here has been around 30 years, but it's these words that has made this person our employee of the year. Kindness, sincerity, fair, a team player, articulate, compassionate about the kids, these are not things that show up in a job description. These are things that show up in your character and who you are as a person. So the next time you think about who you nominate, who's going to participate, think about character. Think about transparency. Think about the relevancy as a person. Think about respect. So our employee of the year, we want to all, everyone stand for Mr. Rami Hall, an educator a fundamentalist, a professional, someone who loves the kids, treats them well, treats them with kindness. As they say, 30 years in the game, the kids respect, the kids honor. So we want to say this man. You got a great team right here. Congratulations, actually congratulations to all of our nominees, all of our winners. Could you all please stand once more please for a round of applause. Thank you so much for all that you do for the Illinois Department of Corrections. And we also, we will need to have Jordan Simmons from Viana, please come back up, get close by. We're gonna take a photo of you, your deputy and your warden. So if you'll just come and stand, stand close by, we're gonna go ahead and get moving just in case my teleprompter goes out. <laughs> Thank you. So again, you, you may all be seated. Again, congratulations to each of you. It's just been such just a wonderful day and we just appreciate you all for being here. So at this time, the Illinois Department of Corrections Honor Guard will come forward and retrieve the colors.
permission granted. If we could all please stand. Acting Chief Chaplain Easton, please come forward to deliver the benediction. As we prepare to leave this sacred space, I offer you an ancient benediction, nearly 3,500 years old, from the pages of the Hebrew Bible. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his face to you and give you his peace. Amen. Thank you to everyone for your participation today. Our IDOC Honor Guard, Tom Ogilvie, thank you for always coming back and delivering with your bagpipes. Our executive staff, thank you all so much for being here, and wardens and deputies for all the hard work that you do every day. We thank you all, and we thank the families of our beloved who have gone on who have paid the ultimate sacrifice. Thank you for being here today. Again, they will all be remembered. We ask that all nominees please return to the memorial wall at the completion of today's ceremony, which is now. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful day, and looks like we made it. <laughs>